Okay, so we weren't on, I had to check the other camera, the peace of Christ be with you today. Thank you for joining us live on Facebook or in the recording. We love you. We miss you when you are not here. Please know that. We miss you when you are not here. We pray that you are having a beautiful day today. Stay cool, um, if at all possible. Um, we do love you again. When you're not here, we miss you. But we do today. Thank you for joining us for worship, whether you're watching it now or later on. The peace of Christ be with you. If everyone will join me on our next song, go step by step. Oh God, you are my God, and I will never praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will never praise you. I will see you in the morning. Step by step, you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days again. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you. Step by step, you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. And step by step, you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. That'll sound great. Thank you. We've already gave, given, gave, given praise <laughs> for that. We already have. Now, Travis, we'll go back to. Thank you, sir. One more. There you go. Our prayers and praises today. Um, many of you have already heard um, about Carol, the lady named Carrie, a friend of the church. She's been a friend of this church for a very, very long time. Um, her mom uh, grew her wings this week, about 3.30 Thursday? Two, three days ago, three days ago? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a, a long transition, but she was, from what I understand, she was at peace for a lot of that time. Um, uh, well, we still need to, uh, we do, we need to pray for, for Carrie and Maddie, the, the granddaughter. Um, Carol's husband? Yes, Ben. Ben, he has, uh, the, the lady that passed away, her husband is in the hospital now. Um, Kathy, you want to speak to that real briefly? Yes, he, um, he fell a couple days before she passed and broke his sacrum, which is the very lower part of the back, but he also hit his head, and so he is not himself. He is mm -hmm. very different. On the praise side of things, <coughs> Carrie and Madison came last night to paint night, and she's bugging her mommy to come to our church. Because she liked it. She said, I like your church. I want to come back here. Yeah. But thank you all for being so welcoming to them. That was, that was great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, if you ever want to see what a, what a blessing looks like, look in the mirror. Because last night we had so much fun. You ever heard the song Balm and Gilead? There's a balm in Gilead. We were a balm last night for two hurting souls. And it was written all over Carrie. But nobody brought attention to it. We were just present and having a good time and allowing her to have some sort of break, some time to breathe. So if you want to know what a blessing looks like, y'all go look in the mirror. 
because that's what you are. So now we can continue praying for them as well as Ben. Um, Rhonda McCray, um, wow, wow. Um, the, she asked for prayers for the Clark family. Uh, for those of you that have critters, whether they're four-legged furry or feathered or slithery, you know the loss of our, of our little babies hits us hard. So the, the Carter family, is, uh, they lost their, their little puppy, their little doggy uh, this week, and she's asking for prayers for them. And we, she, her dad has prostate cancer, and uh, they have to come up with a, a treatment plan for him. Um, they had to stop the testosterone shots, so um, you know, Rhonda didn't go into a whole lot of detail. She just wanted me to share that with you. Um, so, yeah, lifting them up. We had the, the praises for the paint night and the amazing success of that. Uh, can I just say I got praises for AC? Yeah. Can yeah. I just say that? Because I don't have any AC in my car. And on the way up, I feel like I feel like the little doggy got to stick the head out the window. Not to draw my hair at 8 o'clock in the morning, but because it's a hog in my car. So I'm thankful. That's why you need a sunroof. That would make it worse. Um, yeah. The, the, Open it up, let all the windows open. The big girl would not run with that. Uh, yeah, I would not. See who our summer child is. That's right. <laughs> um, we've got some folks that have a lot on their minds, a lot on their hearts, things that have not been shared even. Um, we've got folks that are, are very, very distraught today and um, lifting them up in prayers as well. Anybody got any prayers and praises? Anybody got any? Josh, real quick. Prayers for Jeff because he's not doing too good in Wilshire. Uh, he's had to have major um, removal from tissue because okay. on his right heel, it went all the way up to the bone mm -hmm. infection. So now he's healing, but he, okay. now he's made me POA and medical yeah. POA and I'm under a lot of stress because I'm trying not to observe the power, I got you. but I'm trying to also help him I got because you. I care for him. Yeah, I know you all, you all are very close. Oh, I'm sorry, Dan. Uh, Vader's been pretty sick. Uh, at first, they thought he had cancer, uh, but uh, they halfway ruled it out. They found a um, a uh, module on his intestines. They're not sure what it is. Okay. Uh, so he's been he's been having a hard time, okay. and uh, so he needs prayers. Gotcha. Big Mama needs prayers too. I need prayers to make. The yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mama, Mama needs prayers, and, and it's hard. I know that Vader is a service dog, but he's also your job. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, definitely prayers. That just needs a picture of him. Yes. Um, I, I told a few people a little bit. Uh, Christine's a friend of how many decades? We figured it out. Thirty-two. 33 years um, prayers for her friend um, because she is caregiver to her spouse when he needs it and her father-in-law and her father-in-law which is almost all the time she found out that her father-in-law has like three to six months to live mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> yeah yeah so absolutely absolutely prayers she had to stand up for yeah uh, well I've talk, talked about my dad before Parkinson's is really taking a hold now. Okay. And this past week we've had to put him in hospice care. Yeah. We will definitely, definitely, definitely keep you in your prayers. Yeah. Wow. Seems like stuff is just happening, isn't it? But you know what? Did I see another hand back there? I'm sorry. The one who calms the storm is also the one who is in control. That's what gives our Savior that power to say, peace, be still. It's hard, and I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the storms today. Sometimes when you're right in the middle of it, 
that are wrong about us. Sometimes we just don't know what the heck to do. But thank God, we have a place where we can bring our prayers and our praises and say, will you please pray with me and for me? This is a praying church, y'all. And you have always been. And with that in mind, let's go to God. Loving God, right now, calm the storm. Calm us in the middle of the storm. Whether it be the loss and or the medical issues with our fur babies, whether it be friends, whether it be loved ones who are struggling with grief and with impending news and news that we've already got. Hold us, Lord. Thank you for your gentle touch, Lord. The one that says, my child, I've got you. The one that says, I am right here and I will never leave you. I will never leave you behind. I'll never turn you away. I am right here. Lord, dance with us. We had such an amazing time and such giving and caring and loving hearts, Lord. Dance with us in that joy, Lord. We know that you do rejoice with us, that that was an amazing time last night. Thank you for joy. We ask extra special prayers, Lord, for Carrie and for Maddie and for Ben. Just that. For Rhonda's mom, for Josh and Jeff, Vader and Vader's mom, for Christina, and for this church, Lord, as we seek to serve you, as we seek to love others as we have been loved. We bless your holy name today, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for you. We love you, Lord, and we bless you. In your holy, holy name. Amen. One of the things that I love about this church is your generosity and your love, your love for each other. It seems so boundless to me. And the sharing, love, building community, <coughs> actually, let's stop at the top. Our gifts to God, and that's what this is. This basket represents our gifts to God. So that God might help us to share love and build community. You did that last night. You did that last week. You did that last year. You have done this since 1986. And so whatever you are willing to give today, whatever you're able to give today, thank you for helping it to share love and build community. But if you are not able to give today, we're going to ask that you extend your hand or touch the basket and bless it anyway. I don't preach. I need to keep that. Somebody help me remember that. Bless it anyway. Just bless it anyway. Amen. You know, if you look around you right now, I bet you can, bet you can see Jesus. What do you think? If you look in somebody's face, you can see Jesus in their face. That's the name of the song is I See Jesus. And this was a song that, that, that was wrote by a friend of Kathy's, except for one verse that I wrote. <laughs> but um, I hope you enjoy it. Well, I see Jesus in every situation. God is our destination. I see Jesus when my stormy seas begin to roll and the cares of this life weigh down my battered soul. Peace, peace, dear. God is 
is with us. Then I see Jesus in every situation. God is our destination. Oh, I see Jesus in this world that's all around us. His love, it surrounds us, making us whole. Peace be still. God lives in us. Well, I see Jesus in every situation. God is our destination. Striding through, I see Jesus every time I look at you. Every time I look at you, Amen and Amen. And if you feel the the need to clap for that, feel free. To do that. Yes, absolutely. Let's go to God and give God the praise. Loving God, we do give you the praise for these gifts. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the blessings. We do see Jesus here, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to share love and build community that you may be known here and outside of these walls. Bless these gifts and the blessings, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. God's Word. Our first reading today is from Job, chapter 38, 1 through 11. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourselves. Oh, brace yourselves like a man. Poor woman. I will question you. He's talking to Job, so brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you will answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me, if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? Well, the morning star sang together, and all the angels shouted for joy. And from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Some of you may know that translation as peace, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Thank you for your reading, Lord. All right, now that the sermon title is down there at the bottom. <laughs> Those of you that know about fishing in a boat, I got a little story to tell you. And if you don't know about fishing in a boat, you're about to get a story anyway. So, <laughs> 
back. I won't give up on it. Um, okay, so a long time ago, before or maybe when I had when I was just a toddler, my uncle Bill, my uncle Bubby, and my daddy were out in uh, I think it was in Back Bay down in Hampton, and they were three fishing. And we love, as a family, to fish. I'm from the Tidewater area. And flounder fishing is something that they love to do. All right? Well, one day, they went fishing, and they knew it was going to rain. They didn't know this was coming. Big storm. I mean, great big storm came up. And if you don't know anything about flounder fishing, you know that when the waves are choppy, that's pretty cool flounder fishing because it kicks the flounder up off the bottom. The current kicks them up. Well, then the storm hit. The waves were choppy and the storm was hitting and the boat was doing the boat thing on the waves. Water was coming in the boat. It was coming on the side and it was coming down. And my, my two of them had their, 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 their line in the water and they were catching flounder quicker than they could put the water, I mean the line back in the water. So they were doing some pretty cool flounder fishing. One of them had a big old bucket and was pailing, was pailing, just bailing as fast as they could because they were about to get overrun by the waves this way and this way. And I was like, but Daddy, why didn't you just go, why didn't you just go ashore, man, and wait that? No, because the fishing was good. So two of them would fish and one would bail for their life. <laughs> <laughs> bail faster, Bubby, bail faster. Okay, I'm done, I'm tired. All right, so they would take turns, all right? Bail faster, y'all, bail faster. In Jesus' time, on the Sea of Galilee, storms were not kind. In the afternoon, the storms were pretty bad. But at nighttime, the storms, and I don't know why, they got worse. But let me share a little bit of stuff about Jesus' ministry that's happened already. See, Jesus has turned water into wine. He's turned over the money changer tables, cleansed the temple. He's confronted the scribes and the Pharisees as hypocrites. He's taught in the synagogue. He healed on the Sabbath. He cast out demons. He healed the sick. And he even raised the dead. But that storm, though, that storm. See, Jesus has been teaching on the Sea of Galilee. There were so many people that he had to get in the boat and go offshore because the, the crowds would have just overrun him, begging, begging, heal me, heal me, heal me. He was also teaching the disciples something very, very important. He wanted them to know he wanted them to know how the gospel was going to get spread and what to expect. But you know what? Jesus grows tired. I can't blame him for being exhausted and sleeping in the back of the boat. I can't. I mean, just having to speak loudly. As a former band director, you got got 100 yards of people, I mean, 100 yards with people in it, and you got to be heard over the football field. So that alone exhausted me. I can't imagine Jesus doing this kind of speaking over and over and over all the time. And if, if, and if not speaking, the healing and the confronting of people and so much more. Oftentimes his ministry just didn't give him time to eat or rest. Keep in mind, at this point, Jesus is a rock star, right? He, he, seriously, Jesus is a rock star. But the people have gotten their fill of Jesus' teaching, and, and they're ready to move on. But Jesus asked the disciples to, to, to move on out, to, to, get, to, to, to move out across the lake. There are other boats that follow, but move out across the lake. Storms on the Sea of Galilee, they can whip up in a minute. See, the Sea of Galilee was 680 feet below sea level. And it's almost com so completely surrounded by hills. Kind of reminded me of, of Roanoke City. It sits in a bowl, right? Mm -hmm. You know, just kind of sits there in a bowl. 
and it just kind of captures all the pollen and all the everything. <laughs> Always, sometimes I told Christine, like, Lord forbid we have a tornado because it won't be able to go anywhere. It'll just stay right there and, and just keep whipping around and whipping around. I like that ratio from a while back. But 680 feet below sea level. 60 mile per hour. 60 miles an hour. I mean, that's, think of that in terms of the speed limit, okay? 60 miles an hour winds could kick up at any minute. The water was really, really shallow. It was only like 200 feet, which meant that that wind could create that current that could kick up 10 feet shoreline waves, 10 feet high. I find that unbelievable. But if a storm can whip up that quickly, yeah, I'm all right with believing that sometimes it could be 10 feet high. Nighttime storms, even worse, and that's where we find Jesus. It's dark for the disciples. It's dark. Yeah, a lot like that picture, and I wish that folks online and in the recording could see it. It's dark all around. The storm clouds. I imagine you couldn't see 10 feet in front of your face. A 30-foot-long boat, 8 feet wide and 4 feet high. Got a pointed bow, a rounded back end. We call that the aft. That's where Jesus was sleeping. The fishermen in the group, which you know there are, were quite a few, they could have easily handled that. But not when your sail is going to get ripped in two. Ah, that storm. Waves are overtaking the boat, and they're likely bailing as fast as they possibly can. But that sleeping, exhausted, hungry, Jesus and petrified disciples. Now, how many, tour, how many storms have whipped up in our lives? And how many of them scare the ever loving mess out of us? I've had my share. We get news that our loved one has three to six months to live, or our loved one is waiting to grow their wings. There's too many days at the end of the month and not enough pennies. We want to live our lives as we are created to be, but there's so much hate and violence in the world that if we even whisper who we are, we fear backlash. The storms that, that whip up in our lives, they can and sometimes do frighten us so very much. Even the storms that start out as a misty rain can build and build a, until we get turned around, and then all of a sudden the waves threaten to overtake us, and rain threatens to fill the boat right along with the waves, and we cannot, for the life of us, bail fast enough. We get battered and beaten and exhausted from fighting with the buckets and buckets of water, and it just seems for every one bucket, two more come into the boat. But that sleeping, exhausted Jesus, they cry out to him. I would imagine he's sleeping, and I, my human side wants to believe Jesus might be a little grumpy about that. <laughs> Jesus don't care about a storm, y'all. Jesus don't care. He's sleeping. But they cry out to him. At this point in Jesus' ministry, they have no idea that he has complete control over nature. They've seen him do miraculous things, but nothing even close to planting even a seed, let alone healing a tree or making blossoms and bringing a harvest out of nowhere. So they have no idea. They have no reason to believe that he can calm the storm. So they're scared to death, Jesus! I'm sorry if I busted y'all's eardrums. Jesus! I know I would be. I'd be scared. I probably would. Jesus! That would be me after about 10 minutes. <laughs> Jesus, he wakes up and he, he wakes up and he puts the storm to sleep. He calms the storm those disciples believe that only have been drowned. But yet I wonder if anybody's still bailing water, y'all. 
I still do, because, you know, you get enough water in the boat, that thing will sink. Ooh, with just a word, he calms the storm. The boat settles, and he reminds them about their faith. Jesus knows they're human, that they have limitations and limited understanding, and that stuff happens, and that they will get scared. And what's amazing is he knows that they will even deny him and run away. But that storm, though, they have now seen Jesus' power over the very source of their fear, nature's fear. But on a more personal level, let's talk about that faith for a minute. Jesus wants them to have faith. There's this little saying, I'm sure some of y'all heard, faith over fear. <laughs> now, the first time I heard that, I, 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 I didn't know if I liked it or not. Sometimes I wonder if the person that coined that phrase was saying that my faith should be so strong that I do not have fear. I got a news for that person. Woo, I'm afraid of heights, let alone having faith that the boat ain't gonna sink. I'm like, Jesus, y'all help me with my help me with my, my heights here, but that's not what Jesus is talking about. Faith over fear. Faith. Maybe it's that. It's okay to be scared. Maybe, maybe Jesus expects us to do the best we can when, when we can, wherever we can. Maybe Jesus expects us to serve him and live a life that shares love with God, others, and self. However, when life storms, whip up, and we have to bail, and bail that water faster than ever before, our faith must be just as strong or even stronger than the muscles and the work it takes to bail the water out of the boat in the first place. The one who created nature itself is the one who has the power over it. But Jesus tells the storm. I struggle with this, y'all. Hang in there with me just a few more minutes. When Jesus tells the storm to be quiet and we are still afraid, maybe it's not the storm that we should be asking Jesus to calm. Maybe it's us, his beautiful beloved child. Crying out to Jesus, even that little Jesus whisper of faith that all I have left to give from a, from a parched vocal cord. Maybe that's part of the faith that he is asking us to have. The other part, well, maybe, maybe allowing Jesus to take that faith and, and make it something that will calm us, whether the storm surrounds us or whether the waters are smooth as glass. Maybe that's what Jesus wants us to do. In faith. Faith. Church, this week, when a storm whips up, or even if the way is smooth sailing, as smooth as glass, may we remember our faith in him and allow him to either calm the storm or calm his child. Amen. 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 Out there in Cyberland, you've heard me say it so many times. Cracker, juice, chicken finger, diet coke, Dr. Pepper, whatever you need to join us in this holy meal. This is your opportunity to do that. On the night before Jesus was crucified, he gathered with his disciples, those who had loved him, followed him for a meal, a holy meal. And I imagine that Jesus knew what was coming and that he might have been afraid. But somehow or another, the storm within him was calm. And he was able to share so much with the disciples. At some point during that meal, he took bread from the table he lifted it to heaven. He blessed it. He gave thanks for it. 
he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Literally open for you. Eat me. Oh. And at some other point in the meal, he lifted the cup from the table. Lifted it to heaven, he gave thanks for it, he blessed it. And he said, this is my blood shed for you as a sign of a new and everlasting covenant for the forgiveness of sins. And each time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Loving God, bless these elements. May they be eternal. May they be forever reminders of your love, of your power to calm the storm and your power to calm the child. Thank you for your unconditional love, Lord. Amen. Amen. At this church and at every other FCC around the world, we have an open communion. And part of our communion, we recite the mystery of our faith by saying, Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ has risen, risen. Christ, Christ is coming again. again. Hallelujah. And for those of you um, who um, may not know, I and another person will be here um, to serve communion. We'll take a piece of the bread, dip it in the grape juice, and offer you a brief blessing. If you wish to just have a blessing, that's fine as well. The table is prepared. Oh, and you don't have to be a member of this church or any church to partake of this holy meal. Amen. Come, the table is prepared. Mo, can we get our carpet? Please?